hello, pal. Maria Morales with Throwing Bows Podcast. How are you today? I'm, I'm good. How are you? Wonderful. So really quickly, you know, a lot is made when new fighters come into Bellator with undefeated uh, records. And so going into this matchup against Levin, um, is there anything for you that is really concerning um, or, or just an area that you want to focus on going up against an undefeated fighter who in other promotions has been known for like aggressive striking and stand up? How do you, you know, go into this? What's the plan? You know, it's a, it's a common wrestler versus striker uh, matchup. And, and, you know, majority of the time, the guys that have my background win these fights. Um, you know, he's 9-0 and with, uh, you know, nine finishes or something like that. Because the last fight, he fought a wrestler and was taken down, uh, you know, four or five different times. So, and, and if me and that guy he fought was the wrestler, I would, I would, you know, smash him. So, I'm not, I'm not too worried about any man and what they do. I, I'm just worried about what I, I can control and, and going in there and doing what I do best. And, and that's, uh, you know, now this, this camp, I've been able to really put things together and, and do it against really high level guys. So, you know, I, I'm not too focused on this guy like that. I, I'm more focused on doing what I'm supposed to do and going out there and, and looking to finish this dude. Awesome. And, and with that, let's say that that happens. Um, you know, do you believe that with that, you should be looked at as somebody that should be entering the rankings uh, in the welterweight division? Yeah, I mean, um, I, I, I'm not, I, I wouldn't say that you should just view me like that yet. But I, I definitely think that, you know, uh, with time coming, I, I feel like I'll, I'll definitely be one of the best in the world and, and how I train and the things that I do. You know, it's, it's going to be hard to stop. It's going to be hard for people to stop. I'm in the best shape that I've ever been in. You know, I'm at the highest level that I've been in since I, I, I've started training. The, the longer this, this, this goes and the more you, the, the longer my career goes, and this is going to be the tougher I'm going to get. And uh, I think the, the, the Kyle that was my last fight, I, I think that I, I finished that guy. So, um, you know, I'm just work, we're focused on getting better and focused on, you know, what's at stake this fight. And then after this fight, I'll, I'll look and see and, and, and things like that. And we'll talk to my coaches. And yeah, if they move me in the top 10, I, I'll definitely be ready for it. So Kyle, you obviously, uh, you fought back in October on the Bellator 249 card. Uh, so you've experienced the fight sphere without fans uh, in attendance. And then obviously this is the first Bellator event with fans back here. In attendance, can you kind of speak on that, the, the differences and what you're looking forward to? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, last fight was really eerie feeling. Um, it's been a really long time since I, I've competed with uh, no fans. And uh, when I was in college, we wrestled at Oklahoma State. I wrestled at Oklahoma State. And we wrestled in front of thousands of fans uh, damn near every week. I wrestled in, 42, 000, in front of 42,000 one time and had a, had a really good performance. So... You know, I think fans are, are, are what make, you know, sports in general fun. And, you know, it gets you hype. It's exciting, you know, and, and a lot of guys fold underneath that. Um, and, and for me, if, if you go look at my track record and in, in, in the sports that I've competed in, when there's a lot of fans, the better I do. So, you know, I, I'm just excited to hear people talking and people booing and cheering or however they want to do it. But you know, there's nothing like having fans uh, involved with what you're doing. Steve. Hi, Kyle. It's Steve from MMA Lowdown. So that resilience that you've shown after your first loss has been uh, really great and inspiring to see. Now, I'm just curious to see, so the confidence you've got coming into this fight, is that partly built by the fact that you spar and train with absolute killers like Islam and Khabib? So when it comes to getting into the cage with people who, quote-unquote, have a kind of padded record, does that feel less intimidating coming into the cage? I mean, anytime you, you, you are waking up on a Monday morning and going to uh, your training, knowing that you're going to spar uh, Habib or Islam or, you know, or one of those other high level guys that we could just go down the list that, uh, you know, that I feel more, I, th I guess you would say nervous there than I do for a guy like this, you know, so it's, you're sparring Habib, 
it's going to be hard just to take him down and, and do the things that you, you normally do. It's, I mean, you're in there and it's war for two or three rounds, however many rounds you go with him. And then you got a guy like Islam who will be the next 155 pound champ in uh, the UFC. And, and he's not very small. Uh, I don't know if you guys have ever seen him, but he's a big guy. So, yeah, I mean, like right before I got here, I was training with those guys and, and, and learning and, and still, you know, progressing and doing the things that, um, I do best. And yeah, I mean, once you have guys like that as training partners and you see how they go out and make things look so effortlessly against, you know, much better opponents than, than, you know, the guys that I'm fighting right now, you know, they're fighting the top level and you're competing with them. I mean, there's not much you can look at and, and not be confident about. So, you know, I, I'm a confident guy in general. I think any MMA fighter, if you don't have that confidence, I think it'll end up biting you in your ass. So, for me, man, I'm, I'm confident. I, I have great training partners, great coaches, and I come from one of the best camps, if not the best camp in the world. And, um, you know, I'm just looking to keep doing what I'm doing and, and, and progressing. Yeah, I don't doubt it. Best of luck. Can't wait. Santiago. Hi, Kyle. Greetings from Amsterdam, and thank you for the time. So you already talked a little bit about your camp at AKA. Who helped you out specifically for this fight camp? Do you have a small group who you work with? Um, no, I mean, honestly, man, we have a very good structure at AK and we have, you know, like I said, I have great coaches and, and, you know, everyone's involved and everyone's trying to help everybody get better. Um, you know, it, it, I don't, there's no real focus on just me, you know, I mean, I have teammates that are trying to get better as well. And, you know, and, and if they're pushing themselves to get better then that, that means that they're helping me. So. You know, I wouldn't say I have a small team or my own thing going, AK. I don't. I, I, I have coaches that care. I have coaches that put me in positions, you know, that will help me get to where I need to be. And, uh, yeah, I, I, I have a great team, man, and, and I'm surrounded by nothing but killers. And, you know, and as much as they're killers, they're great people. So, you know, I'm just excited to do what I do best, and, and, and that's compete. Daniel Cormier is one of the most loved people in all of MMA and he's such a competitor. How special was it for you to have DC around you and how did he influence your career? I mean, he, he just called me before I got in here. So uh, he's constantly checking on me. He, uh, you know, I see him every day pretty much. And, and uh, you know, at first it was kind of like, whoa, you know, that's DC. But as the time went on, man, that's like my big bro now. You know, we, we talk about everything. We, we we trash talk each other about, you know, video games. We help coach each other, coach, you know, our, our kids club and things like that. So, I mean, anytime you have a figure like that around who's had success in this sport and seen it all and, you know, and, and, and he's the one that's given me, you know, the final decisions on who I'm fighting right now. And, uh, you know, I, I just feel very comfortable with him and, and I know he cares, you know, so when you have a guy like that, that's, that's, you know, an influence and, and you've got to see him go through some of the, you know, the hardest camps and biggest camps of, you know, any MMA fighters career, you just, you pull from that blueprint and, and, and you don't, you don't make up your own. You, you just follow that. And, uh, you know, and, and I know it's going to work for me and I know that I'll, I'll end up being a world champion at some point. Ed. Hi, Kyla, Ed Carbajal with uh, MMA news.com. Um, you, when you were talking about uh, having no fans and versus fans, uh, you, you used the word eerie to describe the silence in the in the arena. I, I, I was just wondering, does that uh, actually mess with your performance when it, when you walk in the cage and you know the first bell goes? No, because at the end of the day, there's someone across from you trying to knock your head off. Um, mm. So, I mean, it, it was just different. You know, it was definitely different. But you know, I, as much as I, I did, I did lose that fight. I mean, if, if there's a lot of people who all, who also say I won, I, I feel like I had a, a a breakout, you know, as far as as is not using my my best weapon and going out there and, and just, you know, standing up with a very tough guy for three rounds. And, you know, I uh, I feel like I had, a, I had a really good performance from where I'm at, where I was in my career at that time. And, you know, and any time you do something like that, st step out of your comfort zone and, you know, I mean, I, I'm a wrestler, man. I started, I, I just started hitting mitts and stuff three years ago. So, mm. and I went out and, and fought a very tough guy who's been fighting for about 10 years and, you know, and I, I competed well. So, no, I mean, fans, no fans. At the end of the day, I'm a competitor, man. And that's just something that uh, is, is in my blood. Well, thank you. Abraham. 
Hey, Kyle, it's Abraham from the Fight Lee Report. You mentioned in camp that you finally started putting it all together. Were there any significant changes in camp or maybe in your life that has you much more confident now entering this next fight? Uh, no, I mean, man, when you work as hard as I do and, you know, you're around guys that are working as hard and they're getting ready for fights and they're getting ready and doing the things that, you, you know, they're, they're trying to get themselves prepared. Um, you know, I feel like you just, you, you gain confidence from that. And, 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 and that's something that I got to see. I got, I, I've been around guys that are getting ready for fights my whole, this whole camp. And, you know, I have teammates that can wrestle, I have teammates that can strike, I have teammates that are great on the ground. And, um, so I, I have a bunch of different looks and, uh, I wouldn't say there was a specific moment. I just worked my ass off for not nine, nine weeks, this camp. And, you got, got myself in the best shape I can, and we have a game plan. And I mean, that's really all you can ask for is, is those things. That's where you, you get your confidence from. And, you know, it, if I can execute what I've been executing in this camp, I, I, I see myself dominating this fight. Last one, Dylan. Hey there, Kyle. Appreciate you making the time. Yeah. I was just curious because, you know, much has been made of your AKA training and understandably so, but just with like the deeper wrestling lineage you have there like i'm noticing with cowboy wrestling osu you got you know daniel cormier as as has been mentioned but also randy couture johnny Hendricks. like does that compound the motivation level just you know wanting to be part of a similar lineage of mma success yeah i mean man i think uh you know i'm not i i haven't obtained things that those guys have obtained but you know, I, I feel like I've, I've been pretty successful so far as far as, you know, stepping in and, and not just being a complete dud. So, you know, I, I feel like uh, there's no real, there's not like an added pressure or anything from that. It's just, it's cool to be from that. You know, it's like a, it's, it's, it's a blessing, you know, it's a privilege to wrestle at Oklahoma State. You know, there, there's not one man that's bigger than, than the program. And, you know, you, you see guys, you know, that, that go on and win world ch championships, Olympic titles, and, you know, you're trained under the, the greatest of all time with John Smith. And, you know, w once you're able to see all these high level guys and, and their mentalities and, and, you know, get that kind of bestowed in you a little bit, it, it, there's not much that's going to uh, sway my, my confidence from anything. And, you know, like I said, man, it's been a blessing. I, I've trained with Johnny before he fought GSP for about six weeks. You know, I've been around Dana Cormier's camps. Um, I've never met Randy, but, you know, uh, if we ever did meet, we would be able to probably share some very similar wrestling stories. So it's cool, man. It's, it's, a, it's a blessing. And, you know, being a Cowboy is, is for me, it was uh, a lifelong dream. Thanks for the time, Kyle. Good luck on Friday. Thank you. Recording stopped.